As Terry N6 TLU, in this video, I'm going to show you the safe way to initially power up an unknown condition Johnson Viking 2 transmitter. So obviously the first step to ensure that this Viking 2 is safe to power up is a good visual inspection. And you're looking for things that are out of place or other hazards that could damage a transmitter when you power it up. For example, the changes that have taken place in the modulator section. We had some additional cabling that went out the back of the transmitter and they have disconnected the grids of the 807s. So that needs to be corrected. I don't know what's going on here with these additional filter caps but that is not stock and I would not power the transmitter with those. So they need to be removed. And then I noticed down here on the 6AL5 negative bias rectifier there is a broken terminal. So we need to correct that or we're not going to have negative bias. Everything else in here looks pretty good. I'm going to correct these items and we'll reinspect. So I got the modification removed from the 807s and I thought well you know what I better check that interstage transformer I'm buzzing it out. Sure enough the primary is open so I'm going to have to change it. All right, I've removed all the hazardous conditions that I spotted in the Viking 2, so I should be able to power it up here soon. Negative bias. Remember, I had that broken terminal on the tube base. I ended up solid stating the negative bias circuit with 1N4007 diodes, and these are the filter caps using the base to mount them on. So this transmitter no longer needs the 6AL5 tube. Over here, I noticed that the contacts on the key input jack were bent and they are open and that would have prevented me from getting grid current. So temporarily I have pushed these contacts together so they make but I will be replacing that jack. In the power supply area I removed those two caps that were piggybacked across the main filter cap. I had to replace the audio driver transformer. The primary of the other one was open and I've returned all the wiring in the 807 circuits back how they should be. Now we're going to take an ohm meter, verify there's no shorts, and then we're going to bring this thing up on a variac and see if she powers. So before I apply power to the Viking 2, I always like to verify that there are no direct shorts on the DC power supplies. So here is our negative power supply. See, we've got about 5K. Here is what they call the low voltage power supply, which is actually like 400 volts DC. You can see that's not shorted. And then, of course, we have our high voltage cap. We want to verify that those DC supplies don't have a direct short because if we apply power, we could damage them. So, next, I'm going to bring it up on a variac slowly, and we're going to see if the Viking 2 comes to life. All right, now we're going to do a controlled power-up of the Viking 2 transmitter using a variac. Now this variac has a volt and an amp meter. I'm going to be monitoring amperage because I want to see if there are any current spiking events as I'm bringing this up slowly. Okay, We're going to be monitoring the negative bias and later when the transmitter comes up I'll go down to the 300 volt line and make sure that's good too. So we're only going to turn on the filament switch, which obviously will bring up the tube filaments, that negative power supply, and the 300 volt power supply. We're not going to activate high voltage. So here we go. You already see the negative voltage coming up. Remember, I'm monitoring current. So that's going to come up, the filaments will heat, and the meter will fall back. That's normal. Also, I should be seeing the dial lamp. So right now I am at there's 50 volts. And yes I see the lamp on dimly. Good sign. You see our negative voltage is still coming up. So let's switch and take a look at our low voltage supply and here he comes. Bring our voltage a little more. There's 80 volts. You see we're ramping up. Should get up there around 350 to 400 volts DC when we're done. 
but the transmitter is warming up. Amperage looks good. And I have filaments on. No sparking, no smoking. Good sign. Okay, next step. We're going to apply full power. Put a dummy load on it and see if it transmits. All right, here we go. Powering up the Viking 2 full power. A little warm up. Walk through the tune up. I'm on 80 meters and I have a crystal installed. So if I go to CW, see we've got oscillator current, it's a good thing. Go to buffer. Peeking right up. Grid. There she is. And of course you want to set that right on that little red line. Now, for the fun part, go over to phone, we're going to key it up. At this point it's going to bring up the high voltage now, I have not tested that. So if it comes up, you're going to see wattage output, and as I dip the plate, the wattage should go up. Here we go. There she is. Look at there. I'm getting well over 100 watts. This thing's tuning like butter. Go back and recheck my grid. She looks really good. Nice and stable. Now I am not going to hook up a microphone because I noticed that the resistors in the audio section all look baked. So there's no reason to even attempt that until I rebuild it. But we can check the modulator idle current. Looks like it's just under 50 mils. I bet you it's not going to take much. And this Viking 2 is going to be up and running. 